Do YouTube, it's your boy Alvin MV10, aka AMR10, and what I got for you today is more NBA 2K23 Next Gen. More specifically, what I have for you today happens to be the best Chris Paul build in the game, aka the greatest point guard of all time built. Yes, I do believe Chris Paul is the greatest point guard of all time, and I'm including Magic Johnson and the others in this list when I say he's the greatest. All right, now as, as I said, Chris Paul is the starting point guard, right handed jersey number three, famously nicknamed CP3 because of how great he is. And yeah, uh, height wise, he does come in at six foot, six feet tall, which is, you know what I'm saying, always shocking to me that he is that short, but manages to do what he does in the league. Comes in with a weight of about 175 pounds, as well as a six four wingspan to pair alongside this. And body shape wise, you can always go to find because, yeah, the guy always stays in shape. Now, before we get into the breakdown for the build, I got, gotta say, don't forget, if you like today's video, do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to drop a comment telling me what you think about the build. Also, share the video because it also the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to the channel and you ain't done so yet, don't forget to hit that, hit that subscribe button because we are currently on the road to 1,500 subs. Like, since we started 2K23 at like 1,100, we gained like three, 400 subscribers, no, no, 300 subscribers in two weeks. So yeah, if we can keep that hype train going, that would be amazing just for me. Now, as you know, first things first, let's get the physicals out the way. I like to go with an 84 speed on it comes to this build, as well as an 84 XL. A large part of this is he wasn't the fastest player up and down the court. Plus, you saw on the Russell Westbrook and John Wall builds, I gave him like an 87 and an 88 speed. Ain't no way in hell I'm giving Chris Paul a higher speed just because he ain't gifted like that. Now, stamina-wise, went with an 87. Vertical left this at a 54, and then when it came to the strength, I gave him a little bit of strength, you know, just, just a little bit with a 37 strength because it does then allow you to have the ability, you know, to fight a little bit when you're on defense. Now, the main people you will see running this build is going to be them cheesy ass guards because when they see how this build is set up, they might just want to run it. Now, driving layup wise, decided to go with an 87 because again, it is CP3. And then when it came to the driving dunk, decided to go with a 61 because again, it is CP3. He, don't get me twisted. If uh, if you've been watching CP3 for a while, you will know this man has the ability to dunk. He has shown it to us quite a few times, but majority of the finishing is a lot of driving layups. So we decided to go with a driving layup of an 87, kept the close shot at a 62 by default, as well as the driving dunk, put the driving dunk up to a 61. Now this does allow us to finish with only 16 finishing badges, which is kind of hurtful. But with the plus four you get from playing 2K, you can slap one on here, then you can manage to core Fearless Finisher, as well as strapping on Giant Slayer and Pro Touch onto this build. Now, onto the next part of this build, shooting. I decided to go with an 86 when it came to the mid-range jump shot, an 85 when it came to the three ball, and then when it came to the free throw, I decided to go with a 79. My key thinking behind this was Chris Paul, DeMar DeRozan, Kawhi Leonard. Those are three big names who are currently keeping the mid-range game alive, mainly because they love to take a lot more mids than they do threes. So when it comes to their builds, I always gotta go with middies over three balls. So as you can see, this does allow us to get Hall of Fame, Midi Magician, Guard Up, Slippery Off Ball, Comeback Hit, Clutch Shooter, Volume Shooter, Amped, Space Crater, alongside Gold, Claymore, Corner Specialist, Green Machine, Catch and Shoot, Blinders, and then a few silver badges here and there. If it were me personally, Core Blinders, Slap on maybe, I don't know. You do what you gotta do. I'm not gonna tell you what I slap on because then some of you might run some stuff and I'll be annoyed when I catch you in the wreck. Then to round that up, that is 24 total shooting badge points. Then when it comes to the, nah, you know, we'll do playmaking last. Defensively, decided to put an 86 perimeter defense on this build as well as giving it a 90 when it comes to the steal. Thinking behind this is Chris Paul is one of the, one of the best two-way players we've seen at this position. Now, obviously, in this new era of the NBA where there's a lot of 6'7 guards, he's not able to show it too great, but throughout his career, Chris Paul's been one of the best defenders at the guard position, so you gotta put some respect on his name for that by giving him an 86 perimeter defense, which allows him to get gold challenger, as well as a 90 speed, which allows him to get gold interceptor. Now, obviously, I would have tried for gold glove, but I ain't gonna lie to you, that's way too many points. Some of these badges 2K put in, a few of them are way too high for no reason. So, for example, look at this. To get gold glove, you need a 95 steel. If you know how much a 95 steel takes away from all other attributes, because look at this, this will just put us up all the way up to damn near a 90, because plus one more, we're at a 90 overall. That's two overall up, two overalls moved up just by five attribute points. 
which is insane. So personally speaking, don't aim for gold glove unless you're meant to be a lockdown. But again, 86 perimeter defense, 90 when it came to the steal. When it came to the block, decided to give him a 56 just because it wanted to give him a fighting chance of being able to guard people down there. And then, you know, gave him a 27 when it came to the interior and then left the defensive rebounding at a 41. Now, this does allow us to finish with 23 total defensive badge points, which is kind of nice because if set up correctly, you can really be a lockdown on the perimeter with this build. I say a lockdown. You could really guard people at the perimeter with this build. You won't be a lockdown, but you'll be able to stay in front of people. That way, if they try and pull off jumpers above you, you can contest them and actually, you know, force them to take a bad shot. Now, playmaking. This is why I say he's one of the greatest, I say the greatest point guard of all time. I decided to go with an 85 when it came to the speed of the ball, 87, 88 when it came to the ball handle. When it came to the pass accuracy, I put this all the way up to an 86 because I wanted to emphasize this man's ability to not only take you one-on-one -on -one with the high speed of the ball and ball handle, but his ability to just run the floor with a high pass accuracy. Now, as you can see, we do get... Hall of Fame ankle breaker, break starter, dimer, floor general, post play again, special delivery, as well as gold, needle thread of vice grip, bailout, quick first step, unpluckable, hyperdrive, clap breaker, and killer combos. I would personally core killer combos. Don't run, damn, I don't run clap breaker. But that's mainly because some of y'all can't play defense. If you feel the same way about people's defense, don't run that badge. But you know what you should run? Quick first step, hyperdrive, unpluckable, needle threader, I don't like running badges like Dimer because the truth of it is, my teammates have a 99 overall build. Why the hell do you need a boost from me to help you score? If you can't score, that says more about you than me. But yeah, this does allow us to finish with 24 total sh fit playmaking badge points, giving us a grand total of 24, 47, 71, 87, plus the plus four, 91 total badge points on this here Chris Paul build. Now. I'm just saying, that's a good, that's that's decent to run. Would I run this build myself? No. No. This is not the year to run short point guard builds. But I am making this build in case someone is a real big CP3 fan and wants to make it for themselves. Now, takeover wise, very first one you gotta go with, I'd say, team ratings boost, even though I was cussing people out for needing me to get, get Dimer. That's mainly because Chris Paul, again, the greatest floor general of all time. So, you really do want to give a boost to your teammates. And the second one, I'd probably go... I'd go negative impact. I would have gone pull up precision, but I'll go negative impact just because Chris Paul has a mean pull up game. But the thing about it is, when he's needed in the clutch, he also does shoot with people's hands in his face from three or anywhere down the floor just because, yeah, the man is a winner. Now, obviously, he hasn't won a ring, but you know what I mean when I say Chris Paul is a winner. Now, the three players 2K says this build is most like are Fred Van Fleet, Nick Van Exel, Mike Conley. I tried so hard to get CP3 on this thing, but the game just wouldn't respect it. I think it wanted me to lower the shooting and like boost some of the... I think it wanted a little bit more close shot and stuff, but I wasn't going to give it that because again, as I said, majority of Chris Paul's shots are driving layups towards the bu bucket. You never see him just running, trying to dunk it on somebody, or worst of all, stand under the basket and just, yeah. I mean, he does sometimes, but yeah. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, which if you did, don't forget to do me a favor, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as turning post notices on as well as hitting that like button let's at least try and get 50 likes on this thing because if we do a hey, youtube might decide to promote it a little bit more but yeah it's been your boy alvin mb10 aka amr10 i'll catch you in a bit deuces